Hello everyone. In this video, we will revisit Ohm's law with passive sign convention. Ohm's law is an empirical law originally published in 1827. It is perhaps the most famous law in electrical and electronic engineering. Ohm's law states that the voltage across a resistor is directly proportional to the current flowing through the resistor and the constant of proportionality is the resistance R having units of Ohm. You might be familiar with this Ohm's law image mnemonic from high school physics. Covering the unknown variable gives the Ohm's law formula in terms of the remaining parameters. For instance, if we cover V, then V is a R times I. If we cover I, then I is V over R and if we cover R, then R is V divided by I. This basic form of Ohm's law is seldom used directly in electrical and electronic engineering. Let us see why this is so. Recall that voltage is always measured across the terminals of a circuit element. Thus, the voltage has a polarity. Similarly, the current is always measured flowing through a circuit element. Thus, the current has a direction. The basic form of Ohm's law does not take the voltage polarity and the current direction into account. In order to account for the voltage polarity, and the current direction, we need to specify the sign convention. Recall that a convention is a standard way of describing something so that others in the profession can understand what we mean. The most widely used sign convention in electrical and electronic engineering is the passive sign convention. Passive sign convention applied to Ohm's law states when the conventional current enters through the positive terminal of a resistor, then we use Ohm's law with a plus sign. Otherwise, we use Ohm's law with a negative sign. Similarly, passive sign convention applied to power calculations states, when the conventional current enters through the positive terminal of a circuit element, then the power P is plus V times I, otherwise the power is minus V times I. Let us see the passive sign convention in action. The assignments of the reference polarity for the voltage and the reference direction for the current are entirely arbitrary. However, once we have assigned the references, we must write all subsequent equations according to the chosen references. For a resistor, there are four possible ways to assign reference polarity for voltage and reference direction for the current, as shown here. Consider this first case here. The conventional current I is entering the resistor terminal marked plus, Hence, we use Ohm's law with a positive sign and write V is equal to plus R times I. Also, we use the power formula with a positive sign. So, the power P is plus V times I. Substituting the value of V from Ohm's law, we get V is plus R times I multiplied by I and this is equal to I squared R. Substituting the value of I from Ohm's law again, this can be shown to be equal to plus V over R squared times R which is equal to V squared over R. Now let us consider the second case. The conventional current is entering the terminal marked 
negative. Hence, we use Ohm's law with a minus sign. So for this resistor shown here, V is equal to minus R times I. Also, we use the power formula with a negative sign. So the power is minus V times I. Now we substitute the value of V from this expression. And this becomes minus, minus R times I multiplied by I, which is equal to I squared R. Substituting the value of I from Ohm's law above, this is equal to minus V over R squared R, which is also equal to V squared over R. Consider this third case. Compared to the first two cases, when current was flowing from right to left, now we have current flowing from left to right, and the assigned reference polarity is as shown. Since this conventional current is entering the terminal marked minus, we use Ohm's law with a negative sign, and we use the power formula with a negative sign. Substituting the value of V, what we get is minus, minus R I times I, which is equal to I squared R. And now substituting the value of V from above, this is equal to minus V over R squared times R, which is V squared over R. Finally, consider this fourth case. Here the conventional current is entering the terminal marked plus. Hence we use Ohm's law with a positive sign. We use the power formula with a positive sign. Power is plus V times I. Now substituting the value of V from above, we get plus R I times I and this is equal to I squared R. And substituting the value of I from this Ohm's law expression above, this gives plus V over R squared times R, which is equal to V squared over R. Thus, we can see that irrespective of the assigned reference polarity for voltage, and the assigned reference direction for the current, the power is always a positive value, I squared R or V squared over R. Thus, the power is always absorbed by a resistor. Please pause the video now if you wish to study this in more detail. Next, Let's look at the practical form of Ohm's law often used in circuit analysis. Consider a resistor R. This resistor is part of some circuit that is causing the conventional current to flow in this direction from right to left. The voltage at this terminal of the resistor with respect to the circuit ground to which this, this resistor belongs is Vx. The voltage at this terminal of the resistor with respect to the circuit ground is Vy. Since conventional current flows from higher to lower potential, we can assign the voltage polarities as shown here. Now applying Ohm's law with passive sign convention, this current I is given by Voltage at the plus side of the resistor, Vx, minus voltage at the negative side of the resistor, Vy, divided by R. Similarly, if the current direction was assumed to be from left to right as shown, then we can assign reference polarities as shown. And this current I, is given by Vy minus Vx over R. This Ohm's law principle 
which is employed to write these two expressions is frequently used in advanced circuit analysis. This slide shows four different examples where Ohm's law with passive sign convention is employed to write circuit equations. All these examples are from videos in this channel. For instance, we can use Ohm's law to write an expression for branch currents when doing node voltage analysis. We use Ohm's law to write an expression for the input current in Zener diode regulation circuit. We use Ohm's law and Kirchhoff current law to write expressions for currents in op amp circuits. Also, we can use Ohm's law to write expressions for the collector and the emitter currents in BJT voltage divider bias circuits. I hope this video has given you useful and new insights into Ohm's law and you can now confidently apply Ohm's law in circuit analysis. Thank you for watching this video.